So in continuing, we want to finish up the head so we can bring it on to the body. And we don't need to have every outside edge cut out. I'm just doing some of the easier ones as they come. So now this looks like kind of a Rio de Janeiro head because of all the color in that, in that background. So I'm going to start playing with direct adjustments again. Levels, color balance, and maybe in this case hue saturation because I don't want it to be so saturated. And in this case, quite a bit of shifts. So I'm going to limit the highlights because those highlights on those yellow feathers are so strong. So I'm just going to limit them. And I'm going to darken the midtones just a, a little bit. And then I'm going to go to color balance. And I'm going to kind of push away from the most intense colors, push away from the yellows, push away from the greens. Then in the highlights, I might actually cool down the highlights a little bit. Well, in that case, I need to go towards red. But I'm going to go towards red and blue, which is actually kind of unusual. Because I'm looking more at this shoulder and the back of the neck. I'm not as concerned with the belly here. And then in shadows, usually I would go towards blues, but I don't want to bring those greens back. So... Pushing away from cyan. So there we go. That's looking much better. The little mohawk. I can do this with color balance. I can deepen the shadows. Encounter some of that color. So what's fun about it is how shocking that color is. Warm up the highlights. And then I can go to hue saturation and I can just take some of that color down, desaturate it, darken it slightly. It's funny because the projector actually has different color scripts than my monitor. So I'm going on my monitor, but the projector looks a little different in terms of the intensity of that blue. There we go. Okay, now same thing for the body. I can go to hue saturation. These are the big guns. And I can shift the hue of the body. But I can also, most importantly here, take some of that saturation down. So that, that head is more of a focal point. Okay, now not everything is cut out, but now I've adjusted everything. So that mouth is really the focal point I want it to be. And then there's one tricky spot, which is this tusk right underneath that lip. This is what's called a tangency in design. And a tangency is when things are uncomfortably touching. So the point of that tusk is resting right alongside that jaw. And it's uncomfortable visually. It becomes a focal point that's kind of unintentional. So the answer is to either have that tusk overlap the jaw or to have it go far underneath or to have it have some space, right? Anything but having it uncomfortably touch. So easy change is just using Command T. I'm going to first adjust the upper jaw and just tug it away just in that corner from that tusk. And that might be enough to solve the issue. But 
I'll usually uh, approach things from both directions. So this is just fine tuning. Command T here and subtly warp that tusk up and out. Remember, I still want the jaw to feel like it connects, like it does there. And I can even drop, that helps, that jaw a little bit so it's more at an angle and not horizontal. Right, so now that mouth is our, is looking a little a little stranger and big and open, which is what I want. And I might decide I need to burn it a little bit more in the midtones at the back of this throat to kind of go with the contrast of what's there in the shadow. And I might decide I need to dodge that tusk a little bit just in the midtones, an exposure of less than 20. To brighten up some of the midtones in this tusk. So if that shows up, maybe a little bit in this core shadow too. All right, so now I've got my head. As I'm dodging and burning, something I think could use some dodging and burning is the little mohawk. It's going to find it. There it is. So let me first burn it down and I don't like how the projector shows its saturation I like how it looks on my computer screen but let's take that saturation down there we go so the projector looks a little bit more like it looks on my computer screen now All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, let's finish cutting it out. So I have the hippo mouth here. Oh, interesting. There's an element here. It's like a little tooth. I don't think it is a tooth. Let me see what it is. But I might be able to use it like a tooth. Ah, it's the beak, of course. So I'm going to do a little creative internal compositing here. I'm going to take this as a tooth, right? Beak material is very similar to tooth material. Let's see if I can get a really good... I have a 0.8 pixel feather, so it's very sharp. I'm going to use my uh, tablet. I don't know why I'm trying to do it with a trackpad. And just cut around it. And I'm going to internally composite. So Command J, duplicate from something I already have. So I have a free floating. I have this and I have this. Okay, now I'm going to take this tooth element and move it up through my layers. And then move it down so I have upper teeth. Nothing too weird. And then adjust them using levels. It just shows you how you can use control of every aspect. Then I want the color balance. It's very orange right now. I'm going to shift that so it's a little more neutral looking in color balance. But it still has that kind of shadow. And I'm going to play with hue saturation. Darken it a bit overall. Desaturate it a little bit, shift its hue just ever so slightly. All right, now I've got a tooth, and I'm just going to cut it out a little bit better. Zoom in. Now this is why I'm showing you this, basically, because this is nitpicky and not to the level of compositing you need to do, but I'm going to duplicate that tooth. So internal compositing is very helpful. So Command-J, then Command-T, then flip horizontally. And then, of course, I can play with rotate. And I can place that tooth, that whole new element, 
so that it feels like they kind of go with these tusks. And then I can take both of those layers and treat them together by selecting them both and then going layer merge layers or command E is the shortcut for this. And then I can use adjustments on them together. For instance, maybe make them a little bit brighter. They're catching the light a little bit more. And if I want to, I can even just burn their top edge a little. You know, so it's like they have that, that cast shadow from being in the mouth. And if that's too colorful, I can use my sponge tool at desaturate and just knock that color back a little bit at the drop shadow. So I like those teeth more than some of the teeth that came with the, <laughs> the, uh, the animal. And if I'm really being a perfectionist, if I'm getting paid for this job, I would probably then duplicate that, swap it this way, and then use these as a mask for these actual tusks. Because I like that kind of texture a little bit more than actual hippo teeth texture, which I never realized was so, so like woody and grainy. And so then I would just use my eraser and blend in that texture a little bit with what that tusk has. And then I can use clone stamp and I can extend it. You know, there's just a lot you can do. You have control of every pixel. But this is all such detail work and I haven't even connected the body to uh, the head yet. But just to show you, like I like that tusk texture better. So these are options for later. Okay. So I maybe mark that as red. Look at it later if I have time. Deadline style. Okay, now I've got the whole head together. What I'm going to do is select all those layers by holding down shift. Or you can do it with command, selecting through it, every layer. And then click on the folder icon under your layer window to put them into a group. If you turn that group on and off, the whole head should turn on and off. So this allows us, if we use auto select towards group instead of towards layer, we can move the entire layer as one piece onto the body. And I can see that I'm going to need to, actually that works pretty well, increase kind of the scale of my body here. And this shows me where the neck's going to connect with the architecture, with the spine, with the shoulders. You see how I'm kind of lining up the shoulders. And it shows me how to cut out the rest of these layers. So grouping them does not merge them together. That will be something we do later. But it helps us see how everything connects. So now I can cut it out with more intelligence. So I use my magic wand. It does a pretty good job. I'm going to do the select and mask, just a slight feather, maybe a little less than 1.4 pixels here, maybe about 0.8. Delete, 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 delete. Now I go in with my lasso and I clean up what it's missed with only a 0.8 feather. But often I'll just select the empty space just to see the little fragments that I missed that are still free floating around that element. I'll show you, oh, I got the, the tip of it. How can I fix that? If you hold down option, you can subtract from your selection. All right, so it looks like I got everything. If I turn off my sketch, It'll be less distracting. And now if I use my magic wand around it, 